Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, hope everybody's doing good today. So I wanted to come out here and talk about a few different things that are trending right now. If you guys don't know, once again, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, they're all trending on social media. So what's going on is this. Basically the other day, Ben Shapiro went on to Megyn Kelly's show where she asked him flat out about the firing of Candace Owens and if he's anti-free speech all of a sudden. He basically gave a bunch of mush mouth answers. You know, it seems like he's all for free speech until that free speech concerns what he's into, meaning Israel. Now remember when the Daily Wire first started and became very popular from buying Facebook ads, their whole thing was you're allowed to speak your mind here, you're allowed to say what you wanna say. We're not like those crazy leftists who all they do is try and censor people. So that was their whole thing is that they were the bastion of free speech on social media. And you know, they really went hard with Candace. They really propped her up. They saw her going in on George Floyd and going in on the black community and they had no problem giving her a platform as long as she was disrespecting her own community. But once she decided to turn them tables around and start, you know, disrespecting, not even disrespecting, I'm not even gonna say that, but once she started questioning Israel in the Jewish community, that is where the problem lies. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip really quick of him on Megyn Kelly and basically his hypocrisy. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro free speech. The accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? We have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh obviously is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle East and thus the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. The Daily Wire is a, a publisher, not a platform. I would never call for anyone to be ousted from an actual platform, X, YouTube. I, I, even people who are, I, I think, absolutely horrific human beings, I've never called for any of them to be ousted. In fact, I've called for them to have their accounts restored if they've been banned. Uh, that, that's not the same thing when it comes to publishers. Publishers obviously have to decide what sort of things they wish to pay for the publication of. And uh, and when it comes to, you know, you know hosts and, and publishers, you know, parting ways, obviously there will be a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say. We have literally tens of millions of people in the United States who are afraid that the cancel culture is coming for them. And cancel culture does exist. Okay, so what this results in very, very often is corporations looking to cram down a particular viewpoint on you and then cancel you. But when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at the Daily Wire. There, there are polls out there that show that a vast majority of Americans in every single political group, including liberals, feel like they cannot say what they want to say in public because they're afraid that they are going to be canceled, fired, cast out from polite society. This actually happened to a socialist moron named Nathan Robinson. He got canceled from The Guardian. And he said he got canceled from The Guardian because he had put up some anti-Israel tweets. Okay, now I think he's an idiot. I think that his views on Israel are abhorrent but I don't think that he should lose his columnist slot over at The Guardian. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. He certainly would not defend anybody on the other side who got canceled. In fact, he has repeatedly said cancel culture does not exist. Okay, it does exist. The fact that there are people out there who want you to lose your job for the sin of saying things they don't agree with is extraordinarily real, and it is happening on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. You know, the, the Daily Wire is a, a publisher, not a platform. Publishers obviously have to decide what sort of things they wish to pay for the publication of, and uh, and when it comes to you know, you know hosts and, and publishers, you know, parting ways, obviously there will be a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. All right, so you guys just saw what good old Ben Shapiro had to say, which, like I said earlier, was a bunch of bullshit. So now there's been a lot of debate as far as like the black community. Should black folks allow Candace Owens back into the community? Other people feel like we're way too forgiving. I did my live stream the other day and I told you guys how I felt. I don't trust Candace Owens and I'm not a fan of hers because I've seen her rhetoric be used to target innocent black people. I've seen her rhetoric come back to black 
black folks. And my issue is this, with Ben Shapiro being Jewish, I find it very interesting how he was so okay with her going in on black people, you know, talking mess about the black community, also talking mess about the trans community. But now all of a sudden, again, when it comes to his community, it's an issue. So that just lets me know that the Daily Wire is just another extension of white supremacist culture. And they're full of shit. Because it was okay for Candace Owens to abuse black folks, but not to criticize Israel or Jewish people, what's going on down at the Gaza Strip. So now Roland Martin is coming into the conversation and he's basically stating that he does not want Candace Owens to come back to the cookout. And, you know, he has his issues and he's speaking on that. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this clip that's going viral on Twitter right now. But what you will not do is come on this show and show your face and bring your weak, tired, incoherent, nonsensical, trifling comments that have dismissed, denigrated, and degraded black people for the last several years. So by all means, stay with them because we have absolutely no use for you in our pursuit to end inequality and to fight for justice and for righteousness when it comes to people of African descent in this country. All skin folk ain't kin folk. And you absolutely will be rejected at any cookout. I usually really don't like to say too much about black outlets or black media outlets when I see them doing problematic because I really try to give grace to the black people on these outlets who feel pushed and pulled in different directions by corporate interests and yada, yada, yada. And so I don't be trying to say nothing too much when I see all these black outlets rolling out these right wing nut jobs and pundits and shit. But these bringing out Candace Owens should be ashamed of their fucking selves. Candace Owens is an entire white supremacist. And worse than that, she's a fucking grifter because she doesn't believe the shit she says. This is a woman who wanted to be on the left and when that didn't work for her, she pivoted right, married a white man and then spends all of her fucking time blaming black people for every tragedy that happens. Look this woman up. Look at what this woman has had to say about George Floyd, about Ahmaud Arbery, about Breonna Taylor. This is a fucking clan member and during election season this is who you see your black outlets rolling out it's a damn fucking shame it was the worst part the only reason she's even bothering to go on this little fucking press tour and all these black outlets is because the daily wire has dropped her ass. that's why because her right wing money is starting to dry up just a little 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 bit her relationships are being strained and that's the only reason she bothered to fucking roll her ass on over there to act like she give a fuck about what I hate, what I hate is a bunch of black outlets and black media personalities who have audiences, black audiences and community who trust them. That's who the fuck they trotting out for. Like, what does it say? Candace Owens spent years fear-mongering about cancel culture on the left only for her to be canceled by her friends on the right. Say it ain't so. And then what grinds my gears is that there's so many platforms welcoming them with open arms do y'all remember what she said about Ahmaud Arbery? Called him a thug. Y'all remember how ghetto she talked about Juneteenth? When she talked about how it's a made-up holiday as if it's not recognized by the same government that she want to hold so much allegiance to? A conservative contradiction is claiming that council culture is on the other side of the aisle. Meanwhile, now you doing a home-going tour because you was counseled by them same folks, man. Make it make sense. Then last thing. The same media platforms that was talking about how Amanda Seals is unlikable and that her work don't matter that much because she's unlikable. It's now the same folks that's now pigeonholing and, 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 and sucking up the Candace Owens. Conservative clout chasing is a hell of a drug. All right, so you guys just saw what Roland Martin had to say. Um, you guys also watched a few of the other clips of what people were saying on TikTok and on Twitter. I'm starting to see more black folks waking up and realizing like, you know what? Let Candace Owens fight her own battles, okay? Like I said, I don't disagree with her opinion as far as what she has to say about Israel, but again, she didn't need the black community. She didn't care if we stood alongside her or not. So let her continue to stand on her own. Let her fight with, you know, the white folks who agree with her. Let them fight her battles with her. I don't think this is the black community's fight because, again, like I stated before, her rhetoric 
is coming back to affect people. If you guys remember, um, it wasn't too long ago that she was going in on DEIs, right? Which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she went on this whole rant about how, you know, um, she doesn't want people hired for the job simply because they're black. They should be qualified, which I agree. We should have quali qualified people regardless of race for any jobs. But it's, it's almost like she kept making it about a race issue like it's she kept making about black folks not being qualified and you know she went on this rant and I remember Stephen A. Smith and Roland Martin talked about it a few months ago so I want you guys to go ahead and listen to her rant about DEIs really quick had to say you heard a nugget of what Candace Owens had to say but let me play for you what the one and only Candace Owens had to say piggybacking off of Charlie Kirk's assertions listen up but unfortunately, that is the reality of what happens when it comes to DEI. And what he is remarking on is true. I would be terrified if I got onto a plane and I saw a woman uh, flying the plane. And I know that we have the United CEO saying that he just wants to fulfill a quota. He just wants there to be more women and wants there to be more black people. And he's not concerned at first with qualifications. That is something that should alarm all of us guys, honestly. The question, let me piggyback off of that to make sure that I'm giving proper context to her comments because after Charlie Kirk said this, I'm sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm gonna be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. She follows up by saying, I said the exact same thing on this show just a couple of weeks ago. I remarked that now when I even am watching a commercial, if I see a commercial and I see a black person, a Hispanic person, an Asian person, my thought process is, did they just get this because of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, for those that don't understand what those letters mean, I no longer think the person is qualified. She said, it makes me upset that that's my thought process when I see a commercial and when I see a movie. Is this person actually even a good actor or are they just checking a box? But unfortunately, that is the reality of what happens when it comes to DEI and what is remar remarking on is true. Your thoughts, Roland Martin. Give it to me. First and foremost, uh, these people have no idea, no real understanding of what DEI is. All right, so you guys just heard what she had to say. Now, granted, most people don't want somebody hired for a position simply because they're black or woman. But when you're talking about an airplane, an airline, um, one of my favorite discorders flew in the military. She's an Air Force veteran and one of the top Air Force veterans, might I add. She was not only black, but female. And I know she had to deal with a lot of racism and people assuming things about her. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, she went through the same training as white male air pilots, just like there are black men who fly airlines. They go through the same training as white air pilots. Uh, we had a whole movie called Red Tails, where you have black Air Force pilots that were flying during World War II, way before I was born or Candace Owens was born. So when she's sitting here trying to piggyback and co-sign something that Charlie Kirk is saying, it's very insulting. You know, it's not like, oh, we're just filling a quota for customer service applicants. You have to go through vigorous training to become an airline pilot. Um, right now, my youngest son, one of his best friends, he's been going to flight school since he was 16. That's what he plans on doing is flying for one of the airlines. And like I said, he's been doing the classes since he was 16. So this is not like an overnight process. This is something if the parents have money, they can send you to flight school. This is years of training. So it's very insulting to just say that because you see a black person behind a cockpit, your plane is going to crash or you're scared or you're nervous. I think it's just very sad to even have that type of mentality because there's a lot of people of color who fly planes and who have done things to save this country in the Air Force that you would never know this, but there's a lot of black Air Force pilots out here. What ends up happening is that when Candace Owens goes in on her rants, which are usually, you know, towards the black community, right? Then you'll have her, you know, her white supporters they then turn this into like a racial trope. And we saw this happening with the mayor of Baltimore. If you guys do not know, this young man, he's 39 years old. He is the mayor of Baltimore. And so when the bridge collapsed, you know, he had things to say on the news. Um, some people felt like, you know, he wasn't as polished and stuff like that. People, you know, people were complaining on Twitter that he wasn't dressed in a suit. He looked ghetto. But one of the comments that I kept seeing on Twitter were people saying that he was a DEI hire. 
which is extremely insulting because this is the man who's on his second term as the mayor of Baltimore. This is a young man who's taken on a hard job, who's doing well by all accounts, and they're literally call and they're literally calling a man who was elected by the people. He didn't just apply and get the job. The people of Baltimore, black, white, Latino, Asian, they voted this man in to be mayor, and they are literally belittling this man by calling him a DEI hire. Again, this is why I say words have power. The things that Candace Owens says to her base ends up riling people up and they end up running with it and they turn it into a whole racial trope. So, you know, me personally, she got to hold her own on this one. You know, this whole situation that she's going through with the Jewish community and Ben Shapiro, that is on her. You know, it was sweet when she was going in on black folks and going in on Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and everyone else, you know, and that's fine. She got picked up. She got her props. She got her visibility. And now that same platform dropped her like a bad habit when she wanted to talk about their issues. And so that should wake her up and let her know, like, at the end of the day, there are certain people that you can't talk about. You know, that it's always okay to disrespect your own, but not others. Again, like I've said before, she'll be fine. She'll be back, you know, on her YouTube channel making her videos. You know, she'll get millions of followers like she had on the Daily Wire. But again, me personally, she's done too much and she's thrown too much disrespect towards the black community um, for me to be given her props because now she decides to, you know, talk about Israel and the Jewish community. So it's like, OK, she's talking about it, but whatever. It, it doesn't move me. Um, to me, it's just another talking point for her. As far as Ben Shapiro, I'm so glad that basically a lot of people are unsubscribing from the Daily Wire. People are calling him out for his hypocrisy because, like I said, it's very interesting how she was allowed to go in with no holds bar about every group. But once it came to the topic of Israel, that is where he drew the line. Now, all of a sudden, you know, uh, we just had a meeting of the minds. So Ben Shapiro is trash. He's a racist. I don't care what anybody says. He's flat out racist because he allowed this to go on on his platform for years until she said a few things about his own community. So this proves that Ben Shapiro is not a bastion of free speech. He's a hypocrite, okay? What's good for the goose is definitely not good for the gander. So now moving on to the next topic, I wanna go ahead and hit on another hypocrite who's trending right now on Twitter. If you guys do not know, um, the guys from Fresh and Fit, I believe the, it's the darker skin one, his name is Walter, Walter Weeks. I don't watch this show, so I don't know the name right off the bat, but I believe his name is Walter Weeks. Um, he's the fresh and fit CEO, whatever. But long story short, he has knocked up some Asian woman. Her name is CJ Daisy, beautiful lady. Um, she definitely doesn't look like she's 21. You know, they're always going in on older women. She looks to be at least 35 and up. Um, but basically, he has knocked her up. And there's a recording she took to her social media page, to her Instagram, which she has since deleted because I'm assuming she's receiving all types of threats. But she took to her social media page and she posted um, screenshots of their conversations. And then she also posted audio showing that she was knocked up by him and he just does not care. So I'm going to go ahead and read these to you guys. He says, what is this? She says, read it, blood test, pregnancy, blood test. I know, but what does this mean? I don't understand numbers. This is a man that's supposed to be super intelligent. He does not understand numbers. He does not understand that he's basically saying that she's pregnant and she's three to four weeks. So she says, three to four weeks, the doctor says. He says, oh, okay. So in the screenshot, she sends him not one but two pregnancy tests, and they're clearly positive. And she says, you always told me you wanted me to be your baby monther. Her English is really bad, and her spelling is atrocious, but I digress. Um, your baby's mother. I loved you and did everything to be a good girlfriend. Now this is happening, and you walked away. I think I want to keep the baby. I don't want to kill alive. I want to think carefully and take responsibility. And then he says, I'll call you shortly. She says, take your time. He calls her and says, I can't have kids. She says, take responsibility for your action. Then she says, it's our baby and you want to kill our baby. You're not a good human. Then he says, it's not about that right now. It's not good and it's a lot happening, especially now business may be over. So low key spilling some tea on what's going on with that podcast. It looks like they might not be making the money that they once were making on YouTube. So then he says, I don't want kids right now. We spoke about it and you agreed. 
She says, I never agreed. I agreed based on your actions. You are not educated if you keep come inside on me and I get pregnant. I don't get pregnant without your behave. Words mean nothing. Man up. Then she says, I'm not saying I want to be with you because I don't because you are nothing to me but the baby is innocent. Then he says, you should have a kid with someone you are in love with in the same household. It won't be what you expect. Man up, I'm telling you now so you know. She says, I don't expect anything anymore since you are not, since we are not together. I got pregnant with you when I was in your house and when I was in love. You wanted to have the baby. If you didn't, you did come in me with your own pleasure. Be logic, be a man. I don't get pregnant by myself. It's not fair for the baby. What are you saying? We are not together and won't be. Why would that be good for a kid? She says, so why did you keep come inside me? He says, also things happen and yes, feelings change, but bringing a kid into this world without both parents' love is cruel. We both thought you wouldn't get pregnant. So those were the DMs that she showed and then she played the audio. Um, you know, yes, we live in the world of AI, but from what I'm seeing online, people are saying that this is real audio. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this. What? I want the baby because I, I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. No. No. I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good. I am pregnant. I can't pretend like nothing happened. I can't. In my religion, we don't kill. You're not killing it. All right, so you guys just heard that back and forth between him and his baby mama because we might as well call her baby mama because it don't look like she's about to get an abortion anytime soon. She's trying to keep her, her baby, okay? And plus, she knows there's a check to be had. So whatever money he's making, she definitely wants half. So what I find very interesting about this, because like I said, I don't watch these guys, but I do see them go viral. Um, and they seem to have all types of advice for young men, you know, young men who are like my oldest child's age, right? 22, 23, 24 year old, you know, they, they want to tell them how to handle women. And so even yesterday, Sneeko, who's another weirdo, was speaking and giving them all types of praises yesterday. So this video is definitely not aging well. We're going to go ahead and listen to what Sneeko had to say about, you know, Fresh and Fit, the men that he looks up to. No matter what you say about Fresh and Fit, they have saved more lives single-handedly in the West than any other podcast ever. Fresh and Fit is saving more Western men's lives than any other podcast. And that's what pisses off the haters so much. That's what pisses off the sore boys so much. When you go to the religious angle, I can understand the criticisms. Uh, but I do think it's important because it shifted so much in America where the normalization of OnlyFans, of girls being prostitutes. Like it, it, over here, it's like backwards to think that you could be in a relationship with a public online prostitute. If you read the Quran, that's one of the sins that's punishable by death. Prostitution is like one way ticket to hell. And now it's normal for people to be in relationships with these girls. So it's necessary to have a show like Fresh and Fit highlight this problem and also tell men by, and you know, through clickbait, by having them on the show, stay away from this. Because if you get into a relationship with a literal walking demon of a woman, your life is gonna be ruined. It's the quickest way to, to destroy your empire, to ruin your work ethic, to make you lazy, to make you sad. It's the quickest way to ruin you. All right, so you guys just heard Sneeko talking about, you know, a demon of a woman and, you know, how this is the quickest way to ruin you. But it's funny, his own mentor is now in this situation. You know, what I find very interesting about this is that there's so many videos of these guys that go viral on TikTok and on Instagram where they're dolling out advice and they're talking down to women and, you know, the, the stupid women who go on their show allow it. So I'm not mad at them for that because the women go on the show looking for quote unquote advice from them and attention. So they have all this advice to give, but somehow the advice that they're giving to you all young men, you know, they want to turn y'all into incels while they sit around and fuck up to a thousand girls a year. So we're gonna go ahead and watch some of their videos here that have gone viral on TikTok of them just giving advice to young men concerning, you know, gold diggers and thoughts and, you know, women and things like that. So let's go ahead and hear what they have to say. There is no evidence that having sex with a lot of women translates into an ability to understand women 
in the context of a committed relationship or, or longevous relationship. There is no evidence of that. So in, for, for this is where the red pill makes a lot of claims, assertions, but they're not backed because the idea is, I feel like there's just ad hoc justifications and rationalization for hedonism, which is effectively just doing whatever you want, whatever you desire. But really, like, let's, let's, con let us, um, assess this claim, the, the claim that if you have sex with a lot of women, that that's going to lead to you knowing women more and therefore having a stronger relationship, more longevous relationship with some kind of woman. But there's no, it doesn't seem to me that there's any evidence to that effect. Cause I, I was looking at some studies on casual sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at, like, there was like five or six of them that have been done. And all of those studies, they're f first of all, they're mixed. They're contradictory, funny enough. Some of them say that, yeah, they harm women. Actually, most of them say they harm women. Casual sex harm women. That, that is a consensus psychological finding. It, it but, harms men too, a lot of these studies. But it, Yes. It, it some of them it, say it harms men. Some, some of them harm. say it doesn't harm men. Yeah. But, but there's, there's no study that says it helps them in relationships. Do you know what I mean? Of, yeah, of course not. And they would never run a study like that because it would be considered unethical, right? And we know that, you know, when they run these studies, they have to be politically correct. They got to get funding. They have to... All right. When I asked you guys earlier, what do you bring to the table? All the things that you guys mentioned are easily replaceable by a 21-year-old girl. So how are you going to keep a guy around that has options? We asked you guys that question for a purpose. Most women provide the same things over and over again. And if they don't provide those same things over, they provide, oh, I have money and status as if men care about that. We don't. But what happens yeah. if you're so not you care guys? About? That's the scary part. You Nothing. don't know. <laughs> Nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. No, no, no. That's the scary part. Like, you don't know. See, here's the difference yeah. between men and women. Men have to understand women to attract them and know what they want. Women, on the other hand, don't have to understand men or know what they want to attract them. That is why women are able to live in bizarre world and think, I'm going to bring myself to the table and that's enough. But the reality is this. You bring enough for sex, but you don't bring enough for a relationship. Most girls have enough to attain a guy, but they don't have enough to retain a guy. Then, Let's say we're at the club and someone grabs your ass or does some shit to you, right? I'm supposed to defend you, right? I throw an elbow. Like, uh, I've noticed. I've noticed that older women use that as a shaming tactic to men anytime they date a woman in their 20s. And the thing is, this, ladies, it's biological. Just like you man want a man that's taller than you and makes money and is successful and, and has security, men want young, beautiful women. If you're in your 30s, sorry to the ladies here at the table, you ain't gonna be able to compete with the 21 year olds. It's a fact. Sorry, like your mother, money. Mother Nature gives you your gifts, and Father Time takes it away, baby. Men love women under far less conditions than women love men. That sounds like the opposite of love to me. Well, if you love under far less conditions, that sounds like desperation. If you take a majority of men versus a majority of women, a majority of men would like a majority of women. However, a majority of women definitely don't like a majority of men. Yeah, I agree. That's why so, I think women love more. Because when they pick somebody, they're selective about it. They put more time and energy into it. Whereas for a guy, the woman is a lot more replaceable. That's why even Sneeko over here was like, oh, you know, you might step out and f another bitch or whatever. It's like, okay, well, how much do you actually love your woman you really to do something like that? Like That has nothing to do with how much you love the person. It absolutely does. Why? Because it requires yeah. you to step out of your own selfish frame of reference to see how your partner feels about something. If you only prioritize the things that you want in life, that says something about how you view love of another person. It's not really prioritizing, it's just doing what you want to do. Yeah, that's called being selfish. It's usually what you do when you don't love somebody. All right, so you guys just heard what he had to say, and he definitely has a disdain for women over the age of 30. And to me, with the bald spots on the top of his head, he doesn't look like a spring chicken. Like, I'm confused. Is he 21? Because he damn sure doesn't look 21. Um, so he has a lot to say, you know, a lot of ageism. Um, again, what I find very interesting about this is that, you know, these guys, these red pillars, they love to preach, you know, find a woman who's fit, feminine and f and friendly and family oriented and non-Western, you know. Um, and so now he's done that. He got a woman who can barely speak English. She's non-Western. She's a preference. But for some reason, he doesn't want a baby with her. Well, why were you raw dogging her? It doesn't make any sense. So he trapped a non-black woman, but now he don't want the baby. Like, you, you can't make this up. You know, this is another example of, you know, how this man does not want to take responsibility for his actions. So it's cool when you were sleeping with her raw and nutting inside of her, because that's exactly what she's saying in that DM. But now that there's consequences to your actions, you don't want to take responsibility. Now you don't want to 
you know, be accountable, but you tell young men to hold themselves accountable all the time. You tell young women and women on your show that they need to learn accountability and they need to hold themselves accountable. And now you're in this situation and it's, I don't want a baby, have an abortion. Like, it's just really, really sad. Like, and then I've also heard that this is the second time that one of them have been caught getting a woman pregnant and then begging them to have an abortion. So I think the whole situation is just really sad. You know, this is a perfect example of how, you know, they're trying to turn young men into incels and to hate women and to look at women as demons and everything else. But meanwhile, the same women that they're talking about, they're the same women that they're going after. Why is this woman that he's dating, she's not a doctor or a lawyer. You know, she's not what you would call quote unquote high value. Um, you know, I think she was like a beauty pageant chick. You know, she, you know, she, everything on her is based off of her beauty and her body, right? Fake tits, fake ass, everything. Beautiful woman, but everything with her is leading with her looks. And these are the women that, he tells these young boys to stay away from because they're vain and, you know, they just want to use men for their money. But it's funny that that's the woman that he chose to be with. He could have been with a beautiful doctor, beautiful lawyer, or somebody who is more astute and quote unquote high value, but that's who they end up laying up with and knocking up. So, you know, for me, it's the hypocrisy and it's really sad. I think at the end of the day, young men and young women, y'all need to lead yourselves. Y'all need to talk to adults that you see in happy, healthy relationships. Y'all need to talk to people that you know personally, you know, and just see what they did to get into their relationship and, you know, ask for genuine, solid advice. Stop listening to these weird ass relationship gurus, these manosphere men, these bitter Bettys. They're going to have your mind warped. Like I said, at this point in time, dating is horrible, especially for like Gen Z. You know, you have the girls looking for high value men. You have the guys just looking for a good time. Nobody wants to be serious. It's just a bunch of mess. You know, you have Young black girls out here who literally hate young black men because they're listening to the Bitter Betty Brigade. You have young black men who hate black women. It's a mess. It's just really, really sad. And a lot of this is coming from these podcasts, from these Red Pill podcasts, from these Bitter Women podcasts. When at the end of the day, you need to do what works for you because most of these people are fucking hypocrites and they're not living the life that they're fucking leading. Do what works for you, ladies. Don't have somebody make you feel like you're a demon because you lead with their sexuality or because you're over the age of 30, you should just roll over and die. Like, it's just really sad, the propaganda and the bullshit that comes out of these podcasters, not just Fresh and Fit. Like I said, it's a lot of them. And they're only saying this shit. They don't really believe this stuff. They're all grifters and they're only saying this stuff to go viral. So you guys need to realize that and separate the real from the fake. So now, last but not least, if you guys do not know, um, it is being reported that Cassie is definitely talking to the feds. It is being reported that Cassie is cooperating with the feds. So they're saying Diddy's ex Cassie has been in touch with the authorities in the federal investigation. Not just that we're told she's cooperating, as others who have sued him. Sources with direct knowledge tell us that Cassie's amongst the witnesses the feds have been in contact with in connection to the Diddy investigation. We're told that she's been working with investigators for several weeks, presumably even before Diddy's homes were raided. Given the timing, it seems that Cassie may have helped the feds establish probable cause to get a judge to sign off on the search warrants. Other women, we're told, have also been in contact with federal investigators. We don't know what Cassie has told the feds, but presumably it mirrors the lawsuit that she filed against Diddy, in which she alleged he forced her to have sex with multiple male prostitutes, art her, beat her, and piled her with drugs and alcohol over the course of their relationship. She also alleged that he engaged in sex trafficking. Diddy denied her claims, but settled a day after she filed her lawsuit, as we all know. So they're saying others are also cooperating. I know Gene Deal said that they contact him. He'd be willing to cooperate as well. So this is getting very interesting. Like I said, Homeland Security is not going to run down without some type of proof or evidence. But in the meantime, um, if you guys don't know, today, Diddy and his BFF, honey, mm -hmm. Uh, Stevie J, they were spotted in South Beach. They were biking together, having a good old funky time, looking like, you know, mm, looking like BFFs, honey. Um, they weren't on a bicycle bill for two. They were, you know, definitely on their own bicycle. But I want y'all to go ahead and watch this. Stevie J is currently trending once again. So check out this video of them. Ah! 
I love it. Love it. All right, so you guys just saw that video and you guys just saw, you know, all the starstruck fans um, running up to him and, you know, showing him love and everything else. So, again, he's out here acting like, you know, he's living his best life. He's not letting the raid bother him. Meanwhile, Mies is over here stressed, impressed, and writing dissertations. Um, it was also noted, too, that his oldest son, Justin. So now this was also announced today that Justin Combs has retained El Chapo's lawyer. Again, if he's innocent and he's done nothing wrong, why would you have to retain a lawyer that defended El Chapo? So there's definitely some shit in the mix. Um, again, Quincy is not involved in any of this. His name is not coming up. So Quincy got the hell up out of Dodge, unlike Justin and Christian. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Christian ends up, you know, retaining an attorney um, as soon as possible as well. So that is the news that I have for today. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on all of this tea that's going on with Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Roland Martin. Also, how do you guys feel about the Fresh and Fit debacle where he supposedly knocked up this Asian woman? And then last but not least, how do you feel about Diddy and Stevie J being spotted in Miami and Cassie cooperating with the feds? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.